In this short video, we're going to have an introduction to continuity and continuous functions. Now, informally, the idea of a continuous function is easiest to explain using its graph. A function will be continuous on an interval, provided that you can trace the graph of the function in a finite amount of time without lifting your pencil from the paper. Here are some examples. Almost all of the graphs that we've seen in college algebra or in trigonometry are continuous functions. The formal definition is very short. A function f of x is continuous at a number a provided that the limit as x approaches a of f of x is f of a. Now there's three things we want to note about this definition. It is a definition for a single point value or a single number. However, we like to say that a function is continuous on an interval, and we say that meaning that it's continuous at every number or every point in the interval. Or if a function is continuous everywhere, then we just say it's a continuous function. Now in that very short definition, there are three important conditions that are required for a function to be continuous at the number a. First, the limit has to exist as x approaches a. Second, the function value must be or must exist. That is, the function has to be defined when x equals a. And finally, the limit value has to equal the function value. What if one of those conditions fails? Then we have something called a discontinuity. So we say a function has a discontinuity at a number a when f of x is not continuous at x equals a. Now, it's going to be important to be able to distinguish between different types of discontinuities. So one type of discontinuity is called a removable discontinuity. We've seen functions with removable discontinuities. Those are functions which have a hole in their graph. In this example, we would say that f has a removable discontinuity when x equals 2. Formally, a discontinuity is removable when it's possible to define f of x or redefine f of x at only one point to make it continuous everywhere. The second type of discontinuity is a jump discontinuity. This is pretty much self-explanatory. The left limit differs, differs from the right limit. In the graph, you have a jump. And the third type of discontinuity, infinite discontinuity, occurs when you have a vertical asymptote. Remember, a vertical asymptote can occur when either the left limit or the right limit goes to either positive infinity or negative infinity. We can talk about one-sided continuity. Again, a very simple definition. We replace the two-sided limit with a one-sided limit. So a function is continuous from the left at a number a, provided that the limit as x approaches a from the left 
of f of x equals f of a. And by the same token, a function f of x is continuous from the right at a number a, provided that the limit as x approaches a from the right of f of x equals f of a. Let's look at an example. Here we have a piecewise defined function. And here, when x equals 2, we have a jump discontinuity. Now the function is defined at x equals 2. And uh, so coming from the right, we would say that f of x is continuous from the right at x equals 2, since the limit as x approaches 2 from the right of f of x equals 3. And that's the same as the function value. However, if I'm coming from the left along the parabola here, the limit exists. And the limit as x approaches 2 from the left of f of x is going to be 2. But the function value is 3. And so since the limit value does not equal the function value when you come from the left, it is not continuous from the left. Well, I hope you found this short video on continuous functions and continuity useful.